Who? What's going on, YouTube? Is Donnie B all day? I have a video for you today that I am not excited about. I'm excited about the knife. I love what I'm holding so far. Haven't used it yet because I was saving it for today. But I am absolutely not not looking forward to what I'm about to do. Um, it's like blizzarding pretty much out there right now. We got a ton of snow. Um, too much for me. I mean, any's too much for me. I hate it. So what we're going to do, I, I always get asked, hey, man, when are you going to do a video like showing how you use a knife for survival and, you know, in real world situations, how do you how are you going to use it? So what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to go out in the snow and we're going to take our Condor Hudson Bay and we are going to have to get some wood, wet wood in wet snow and try and build ourselves a fire. Um, and, uh, and we're going to use this to do that with. I'm going to do the, um, I'm going to shoot the video part with gloves on, part without. I hate doing um, videos with gloves on um, because I want to give an absolutely true and accurate feel of the knife. And you can't do that with gloves, but it's freezing out there. So I will be wearing some big fat North Face, which means I will have no idea what this knife feels like with this on. So I'm going to have to take them off every now and then or, or start with them off, however it's going to work. But somehow I'm going to let you know, and I can tell you right away, initially, um, because the knife is cold, especially, this is a very, very, look at this, how easy I'm gripping, how easy it is to turn the hand. This is a very slick grip out of the box. Um, I can tell you that I am a Condor fan. I, so far, all my Condor knives, I've, I just freaking love them. I, I, I'm having such good, um uh just everything it, it's a good experiences with condor knives um they haven't done me wrong yet condor has not made me a knife that's bad not made me a knife made for everybody um but this one i can tell you that initially let's see if i can pull it away from my hand yeah that right there is for survival no bueno in a kitchen situation like doing food prep things like that so if if I had to cook out in the in the wild and I had to prep some food, um, the blade stock on this being what it is and having that nice, beautiful flat grind, um, then I can see that being excellent for that. But just as far as barehanded swinging, there's no lanyard hole and I could see this swinging on a cold day just leaving the hand if you're not careful. So I have to be very, very careful with this knife today. Um, so let's look at some of these speckeroonies here. Uh, blade length is 8.39 inches, and it is all of that. It is an impressive blade. I freaking love the, um, the drop in the spine um, down to a nice clip. This is just a really, really good looking knife. Um, Overall length is 13.3125 inches. That's a whole lot of after the dots. So let's just say 13 and a half inches. Um, edge type is plain. Handness is ambidextrous. Best use survival. Uh, we're going to find out about that. Um, let's see. Made in El Salvador. Blade thickness is 0.2 inches. So I'm guessing that's about four millimeters. I don't even know what 0.2 inches is. I have no idea. Could be four, four and a half. I'm not exactly sure. Um, finish, Condor Classic. Uh, da, 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 da. Anything else that we can get out of here? Um, handle color is wood. Handle material is walnut. Um, these are brass pins. We are full tang. Um, Rockwell hardness of 50 to 55. It is 1075, so it's a little softer than your 1095s and 1084s and things like that. And it does have a softer um, uh, Rockwell hardness. However, that's not exactly a bad thing because it leaves you um, the ability to field sharpen. 
and uh, on a survival knife, field sharpening is actually important. So is holding an edge. I get that. But all edges are going to dull eventually. It's the edges that you can actually swipe on some rock next to a river to get back that is going to help you out the most. So it does have a leather sheath. It is a friction hold. I do believe it is a friction hold. I, you know, I'm really glad this works because I'm sitting down. So right below this knife is my bare leg. <laughs> Not bare, I'm wearing shorts. Um, but if it didn't hold, I might make a mess. So let's get this thing out. Yeah, man, this thing is just slick. A fighting knife, it is not. It is not a fighting knife. However, every knife is a fighting knife because cavemen use sharpened sticks. This would still work. It's just, even with this really sweet swell, it's good looking. Um, I think the handle is just too short. And... Um, I mean, my hand takes up the entire thing, um, and I don't have a tape measure near me. I, I'm not exactly 100% sure what the length of the handle is. Um, it's probably four and a half inches, four and a quarter inches. I don't know, somewhere in there. But uh, yeah, it's just it's too small, and it, the swell, while it looks good. Um, the swell could go up more if there was if there was a quarter inch more in the swell with a harder drop, maybe a half inch longer with a hard drop, it would be perfect. It would be it wouldn't slide out of the hand at all. Um, but let's uh, let's take her out and see what she can do. All right, hold on. Okay, so you guys know I wasn't messing with you. This is what it looks like back here. It's just everywhere you go, it's snow. Uh, now everybody talks about survival situations, what you need and what it takes and blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you what the right, um, gear as far as clothing, whew, if you don't have a tarp or the ability, like, let's say you don't have rope, something, or, or, you know, it's, you're having a hard time, uh, finding a spot to where you can, like, this is what I would do. If I'm in this situation without a tarp, I'm going to knock down one of the big sticks I'm going to go from this one closer to the tree to this one over here. I'm just going to put a stick there. Then what I would do is I would take one of these fallen trees and knock off a bunch of these branches. And we did one back there. I did a video showing you guys this. And I made a lean-to out of nothing but branches. And for shelter purposes, that's what I would do. But the main thing beyond shelter is fire. Fire is going to keep you alive longer than shelter in a lot of cases. It's not the only thing, but it's the best thing. So to build a small fire, because I know that if I have a fire going, I can then use my time to make a shelter and uh, I'll be all right because as I go, I can continue to warm. Um, so if you don't have a tarp, uh, or anything like that, which I do have a tarp laying around here. Um, and I could drape it over. So I might do a fire in front of a tarp and show you that kind of thing. And I'll just do a drape over with the tarp. Um, then we can, we can get this thing going. So first things first, I need to survive, right? So I need to pick a spot and the spot I'm going to pick is right here because I'm under a tree. And so anytime you see life even if it's dead life like this that means you have some kind of cover so i know that no matter what i already have shelter my clothing is warm enough to where if i sit on the ground even in the snow i'm going to be warm i have the you know the onesie type thing it's like a uh, uh what do you call it like the car hard onesies and my arctic jacket which is pff, amazing i don't feel anything out here um also my army arctic boots um i know that if i'm going to put myself in a situation where i need to stay alive i'm going to wear what it takes to stay alive um and this is the kind of thing now i do have a trampoline over there and if i was going to simulate me being in the wild if i could find a, a rock ledge that would be my shelter 100 percent. you could see underneath of it underneath of it underneath it there is dry leaves and um clear ground and all that crap so that would be my spot but i'm going to pretend that that's not there and i don't have a rock but pretty much everywhere in the wilderness you're going to find a tree to go under so what i want to do 
is get this party started. I am going to... Uh, I left my knife in the box. That's why you see me carrying a box. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear myself a spot around where I want to, um, A, hang my, hang my tarp, and B, clear my ground. So what I want is I want the fire in front of me, in front of the tarp, so the heat comes in. So luckily I have a tarp here just sitting on the ground. So I'm going to pull it up, possibly. And if I can't pull it up because it's frozen to the ground, then I'm going to say, screw it. I'm going to go au naturel. No tarp. This is me walking out in the wood. Oh crap, we got a blizzard. I just got snowed in. All I have is a knife. That's all I have. I know 100% that I don't need to go foraging for water. I'm not going to need food. I need to survive the night. That's all I need to do is survive the night. So this is what I need. I need a clearing. I need some kind of protection over my head, which this will do. I'm getting very small flakes coming at me rather than the big flakes from, from that side. I need wood and that's it. And I need a way to start my fire. Luckily, whenever I go out, I carry my ferro rod with me because that's mega importante. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my, use my ground here. So I'm pulling up some sticks. I'm just gonna use my foot to clear out a nice little circle. And that's gonna be my fire pit, right? I'm gonna get the snow off of this, this little area. And because I'm under a tree, I have pine needles already down there. So I have a nice, a nice beginning bed. And what I'm gonna do is take this, since this is a dry stick that comes off of this tree, I already have a piece of wood to get my, to get my fire going with, which is going to come in very handy. But this is a knife review, so I'm gonna have to cut down some more. So all I did, is use my foot and made myself a deal. So now let's say you don't have nice cushy boots and you're thinking, well, if I use my foot, then my shoes are gonna get wet and my feet are gonna freeze. Well, that's true. And you can't survive with wet feet. So let me see if I can angle you guys down here so you can actually see. So this is where the knife comes in. I have my, have my trusty dusty knife get it out of there um i have my i have my trusty knife so now i have this clearing that i or it's not a clearing yet let's say i want to make a clearing i'm going to use the spine of my knife to just push away snow so it's going to be my trenching tool almost like digging a hole and if i wanted to get underneath the ground so let's say i'm going to take take the spine of my knife and i'm going to push away the, um, the pine needles. First, let me get rid of all these sticks that I just put on top of the pine needles. And then I'll show you, hopefully you guys can, I can't see because it's a stupid hood, but okay. So, so I'm just gonna push away the pine needles. I'm gonna clear them from everything. And what that's gonna do is, A, it's gonna loosen them from the ground, but B, now I have fire starter. So all these pine needles are gonna be an absolute lifesaver. Now I'm on frozen ground, but I have a knife. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just stick my knife in the ground and pry. And what I'm gonna do here is make a little tiny hole, right? And what this is gonna do is gonna get me underneath the, underneath the earth just a little bit so I have fresh dirt, right? And what this is doing is it's giving me a um, dry ground and B it's giving me a buffer so my flames are controlled right where I'm gonna start I want to be controlled so the knife what does it do first things first it helps me clear a spot it helps me dig a hole so right now I have a nice hole and I'm going to refill it with all these beautiful pine needles that light on fire really easy so what we have to do is we have to feather stick, right? So luckily I have all these sticks that I just broke. What I'm gonna do now is feather. And I'm gonna push down into the hole that I just made, right? So, so that's where I'm going. So that way, if my feathers come off, because I can keep them on there, 
right? But if they come off, they're going straight down into this hole I'm making so I can make a fire. Now, is it a survival knife? Is it gonna feather? Abso-freaking-lutely. I'll even uh, give you guys, I'll, I'll do a pull, which I love doing, um, and show you exactly how it's gonna look. Bada boom, bada bing. So now, once I get a bunch of these feathers on there, I can actually take my knife and do that and just knock them off. Um, one of the things I like to do is this. So what's happening is rather than big long feathers, I'm getting these tiny little shards and I'm doing it in one spot, pointing it downward and just letting the knife do the work. It's taking me, I'm not out of breath, I'm not swinging hard, nothing like that. And I'll show you what it's, what it's giving me in a second. I just want to get some more on there. It's giving me a whole bunch of little, tiny, fine, thin pieces of wood that's going to help me survive. And uh, that is key. So let me show you, show you where we're at. Put them all right in there and bring you over. You see all that? I hope you can because I can't really see. I got the thing pointed down. All those little tiny pieces now are going to help me out incredibly. Okay, so what I need to do now is get a couple bigger pieces. So this is where we get this knife testing going and we're gonna see how does she chop. So let's go over here. We're just gonna leave all that and we're leaving it exposed because I'm under something, right? Being underneath that tree, just got snow in my boot. Um, being underneath that tree means I don't have to worry, right? So let's see if I can stand you guys up here on the down trampoline. So now clear some snow off of my stick, which I think is in the shot. And I'm gonna take off my glove so I can get a feel for this knife. I have to say that now that I'm outside and it's wet, it's slightly tackier. And hopefully the vibrations won't knock you down. I have to remove the hood so I can see. So here we go. Okay. So as far as chopping, I can tell you right away, it's, a, it's creating a hell of a hole. Hell of a hole. Um, it's actually a chopping far better than a knife this size should or even could um, and I'm holding I'm holding the knife way down on that nice little uh, that nice little wedge right there that swell and uh, I'm actually having an absolutely easy time with this I'm gonna put on a glove my hands not actually cold so it's okay but I want to see if I can swing at it with the glove hand and still maintain a hold on the knife. See, I, I can tell you right away that I was definitely, I could feel it slipping away. I was definitely better barehanded with this thing getting wet. I just feel like it's coming out of my hand with every swing. All right, so we have a piece of wood. I have a baton, so we're gonna use that second piece of wood. Let's see, that edge is perfect. That edge is still perfect, it's beautiful, looks good, right? Everything's still there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we're gonna take this piece of wood, we're gonna knock it into pieces that we can use for firewood, which means we have to baton. We didn't come out here with an ax, we came out here with a knife. So, survival, survival, survival. <sighs> All right, so I'm gonna actually put you guys more under the tree this time. So, let's see, hopefully, uh, yeah, you guys got a good view of that. So now I'm not gonna put my, my wood on my hole. <laughs> I'm not gonna put my wood on the hole because that wouldn't really help out. I'm gonna put it next to the hole. And we are going to baton. Now I have frozen ground, so I'm not worried about batoning 
um, off a log because I know my knife isn't going to sink into the ground, which will take away what I'm trying to accomplish. Let's see here. Got a piece there ready to go. I know some of you are probably watching this and thinking, because you live in a nicer spot without snow, you're thinking, oh, hell no. But you never know when that freak storm is going to hit anywhere and you are going to be stuck and you're going to want to know. Well, not just how do I survive, but I only have a knife on me. Can I survive? Uh, this is going to do it. This is going to do it. So now I have firewood building up. I have a nice little pile of firewood and the knife is doing its job. So it classifies itself as a survival knife. To this point, I feel like I can survive with this knife. All right, so there we go. Batoning is done, feather sticking is done, chopping is done. What's left for surviving? We have to start a fire. So I have to get my ferro rod and put all my little shards and pieces in here, I got my ferro rod in here. Ooh. I had a couple pieces of uh, dry wood too, just in case. I don't even think I'm gonna need it because all these pine, oh, I got my back to you guys. Um, I got my, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> here's my spine. Hope you guys like it. All right, so I got all my wood gathered. I have my sticks gathered. I have my ferro rod. And I have my knife. I'm going to try striking with the spine first. Um, if that doesn't go, I'm going to take off the glove. Um, if that doesn't go, then what I'm going to do is use where I usually use is the ricasso. But a lot of people like to use the spine. I don't know. I just think there's a better spot. I'm going to use the Ricasso. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. I see some fire. Woo, I do see some fire. All right. I'll tell you, that little point of the Ricasso, that's going to be the, that's going to be your spot right there. All right. So, now I shook this out. That's going to be your spot right there. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these little sticks and I'm going to build me just a little fire to keep this going. Luckily, I have all those little pieces that I feather sticked down into my down into my hole. That never gets old. I'll tell you, that's that's funny. I don't care who you are. Um, and here we go. The fire will begin to build itself up all with the help of a knife that's it that's it you don't need to go out with these crazy crazy expensive kits for survival all you need sometimes is just a good knife and uh so far i can tell you that this hudson bay as far as survival is concerned even though I'm not crazy about the handle, this Hudson Bay works. So what I have here is instant warmth, right? Now what I'm doing is I'm building a box with my sticks. And I told people, I said, everybody that was asking, they say, hey man, when are you gonna go out and you actually do a video showing how you use your knife for survival, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, there's no way in hell I'm doing that in the winter. Well, guys, you know, when people want to see 
a knife being used like I say it, it, it could be used or should be used. Well, sometimes I gotta put my money where my or my mouth where my money is and my money where my mouth is. I don't know, sometimes I just gotta put up money, I guess. So, here we are. We're using fresh chopped wood for the fire. And for people that think, oh, you can't start a fire with wet wood. Well, I'll tell you what, you see that smoke? Yep. Yep. So, where'd I, where'd I put my knife? I put it back in the sheet for some reason. I'm still surviving. Why did I put it away? So, I need to break down a couple more of these sticks. So, you know what? I'm going to use a spine, and I'm going to do just a break. Boom. That way, and a lot of people don't realize that you take your spine and you come down on, on sticks that it may be hard to break with your hands unless you're stepping on them. Um, but doing that, it saves your edge. It, you, break it with your spine. Break it with your spine. Now you don't have to worry about dulling that edge on something stupid. Right? So right now, I have instant heat. I can feel the heat right here. I don't know if you guys can actually see this fire. Let me put my finger in it. Okay, so that's the fire where all that smoke is. Um, <laughs> why I do that? Uh, so, so this is it. Now I have firewood. So if I want to let this fire just continue to grow and get bigger, um, I can do that without issue. Uh, everything is everything is here for me now because I'm surrounded in snow. I don't have to worry about this fire spreading and going crazy. Um, and what I can do is I could build, you know, I can, basically you're making like a bunch of snowballs, a little snow mound, and make a circle wide enough around the fire where it's not going to melt, but narrow enough to where it's going to keep it all in. And now you really don't have to worry about your fire spreading. Um, this is just a uh, an easy, easy survival video right here. Um, wet, I have to say, this thing is so much better wet turning it look at this look at this i'm still turning it but it's nowhere near as easy so i suggest that maybe if you're out and you're doing a survival type thing and you're using this knife if it's not cold and you don't have automatic wetness maybe lick your palm a little bit <laughs> it sounds gross but anything you can do to get that tacky there's even a spray out there it's it's a tack spray um i think it's like spray tacked I think it's called it's it, people use it for like baseball mitts and stuff like that. Um, and you could, you could spray it on there and it just gives a nice tacky feel. Uh, so far this guy right here, whoo, this guy right here so far is a winner. We'll let that fire burn a little bit. Look at that guys. We are surviving. I'm going to take you guys for a little walk right here. Let's see. Uh oh, Oh, I missed a throw. <laughs> I don't like missing throws. I don't like it. Let's see. I'll go hold reverse grip. Oh, <laughs> I hit my I hit my hat. I hit my hood with the blade, but she's still stuck. She's still stuck. It's stuck pretty damn good, too. So, survival situation. You see all that smoke billowing? Um, that's my fire burning. And what's happening is... The reason there's so much smoke there is because that wood is wet. So what you're seeing, I don't even know if it's in there. What you're seeing is steam. That water is just burning out of the, burning out of the wood. But you can see the flames rising right there. It's starting to come, man. It's starting to come. That fire is going to burn. And what's going to happen is with all that heat sitting on it, um, ooh, this thing's loose. Um, with all that heat sitting on it, what's going to happen is, uh, it's going to dry the wood. And as the wood dries, um, it just becomes more flammable, all right? So it's good. It'll take its time. Let me wipe this down. Ooh wee. So what do I think about the Hudson Bay by Condor? I'll tell you what, at first grip, I wasn't too sure I was gonna like it. Not, a, I mean, absolutely not sure I was gonna like it. I actually thought the opposite. I thought this isn't gonna be a good survival knife. But um, when it comes down to making 
something to survive on, which is fire. Fire is the essential survival tool. Um, making fire, getting wood, processing wood. It did what I needed it to do. Um, now it comes down to, okay, well, what about uh, catching an animal and skinning and things like that? Let me try and uh, let me try and find one. Hold on. I know as soon as I said, let me try and find one. A whole bunch of Roscoe fans went, no. <laughs> so frozen, man. I just found this dead carcass, right? I got lucky. There was a dead animal. Another animal maybe, uh, maybe killed it for eating. It got through what it wanted and then it just left the rest. Maybe it died of natural causes. Maybe I killed it with my knife. Maybe this was a rabbit and I was able to hit it. But either way, is this thing going to be able to get through? Oh yeah. So am I going to be able to process food with this knife? Whoop! Yeah, um, absolutely. You can see the fire is starting to grow. Those flames are getting hotter. I am about four feet from the fire and I can feel the heat from here. Um, that is a job well done by the Condor knife, by this Hudson Bay. Um, this thing had a job to do. The job was accomplished. I came out here in the snow. I didn't do this review inside the house. I could have, but I didn't. I came out here in these conditions, watching the snow build up. And I hate the cold. You guys know I am no fan of the cold, but for you, look at what I do. Um, so, so that's it. Yeah, man. I, I, I have to say that I am a firm believer in this knife as far as can you survive with it. I just did. If I am cold and I have this knife with a fair rod or some kind of way to make a fire, even if you have to do the old, you know, make some, make some stick rubbing happen, I don't do that stuff. That's why I carry a ferro rod. Um, but if you have this knife, this knife helps you survive right here. And I mean, it helps. I can feel the heat coming from that little tiny fire from four feet away. I can feel it. And uh, if I want that fire bigger, I would just throw on wood and boom, I got a, I could, I got a blaze going. If I wanted to pull up that tarp that right there that's frozen into the ground, boom, I got a shelter. But I have to say, I don't know if the, if the camera's gonna pick this up, but right here, you can see that it's pretty heavy snowfall. It's thick, it's big. Under here, let me see if I can get under here with this. There's pretty much nothing. It's basically what's blowing from there. So with a fire underneath the, um, underneath the, the canopy of the trees, uh, you're golden, you're golden. I could literally lay down with this jacket on with the fire and I can survive. If it came down to, uh-oh, I have to wait for somebody to come find me, right? Or, or something like that to that nature. I know that this knife is going to help me get to the point where they're not gonna find me as a corpse. They're gonna find me as a guy who's fairly warm and doing okay. And here's the deal. Oh, there's no water. Mm, I need to survive. Mm -hmm. Um, in a, in a position where, where you're stuck with, uh, with snow and, and all that, good to go. So that's it for this one. My phone just said like maximum file size. Hopefully it's still going. Um, that's it right there. Can you survive with the Condor Hudson Bay? Absolutely. freaking -lutely. This is a good sturdy knife. It's good looking. And once you get the handle kind of right, it, it feels good. So. Can I recommend this knife, the Condor Hudson Bay? Yes, I can. Yes, I can, because I am Donnie B. all day. Until next knife. Woo!